Weekend's Mortals. Today will be Mr. Boogity, a classic 80s movie. Thrilled to finally move into a full house size house for the Lucifer Falls, New England, Claude and Lois Davis, along with their children, Jennifer, Crawlin, and R.E., arrived at their new home on a dark, gloomy night. However, before then, the sour note of a daughter named Jennifer really does not like pranks, and I can agree, and her brothers love the prank as for the father. I think she got more of a seriousness from her mother, though. Louise, a very nice woman, after all. And I knew, and there Davis never really liked him. As they entered the search for a light switch, they are spooked by the old man named Neil Witherspoon, who warned them of the house tragedy, telling them to beware of Mr. Boogie. Now, Mr. Davis doesn't believe in the paranormal, but I think the little boys and the girl does. And Mr. Witherspoon was the, um, Voice character was the actor who played Neil Whisper was John Aston. You know John Aston from the Adams Family. Or one of them. What makes sense? He played a creepy character. <laughs> Which is really good. In any case, as the family check out their new house, while Cora and Edie inspect the good floor, Jennifer looks around upstairs and she hears someone sneeze and sees a blue light. He meets them from behind the door. He has the door to the end of the hallway. But when she opens it, the door is woman's empty. Hmm, maybe she saw the blue fairy. <laughs> Meanwhile, the boys have made their way to the house in the eerie basement where, where E.R. found a rocket chair. Oh, it's a rocket chair! That'd be so cute for my doll! It looks so cute. Actually, I have even had one. Unfortunately, it broke and I had to donate to charity. That was a beautiful one, but now she has a better chair. A better one, indeed. And yet, as soon as they went, as soon as they turned around, the teddy bear had finally was gone. Was gone. This is between us, though. I say supernatural is about to happen in this crazy house. There's no metal furniture and other colors, though, and the noise gradually went upstairs. And this bear disappeared, which is common knowledge, which some spirits do like to play toys. Next morning, the family gathered for breakfast filled with gags, funny glasses, rubber eggs, and squirt in water. Jennifer complained about the strange sneezing, but called and assured her that ghosts are real. And yet all the go and yet the boys are starting to drive her nuts with the pranks. And they can't she can't help it. I hate a prank. I mean, I hate a prank, so if I ever have kids, oh wait, I do have kids. Yeah, it's true. Mom doesn't like the prank. Sally. Yes, mom. Go to your room. Uh, and no, you will not see them in their costumes. Well, this is a day have military duty. What? You heard me. Yeah, I hope your great grandfather was a clean and on the night where she What? Come on, Mom, that's not fair. If you behave more oh, that's my daughter. In any case Back to our little room. That night Jennifer walked down the hallway and he heard and she heard sneezing and seeing strange green glow. And the door at the end of the hallway, she opened the door and basted on a light red. There was a strange wind. She fainted as mechanic laughter is heard. Later that night, her family waked her and they informed her that she saw Mr. Boogity. And the kids were just being a bit of a nasty pig, being idiots. And then as they opened the door, they found nothing. Green footprints and uh, the father... Thought it was a great gag, but no, Jennifer was actually being really serious. I mean, come on, can you just believe your freaking daughter would be saying, She's your own daughter! How can you not listen to her? Heck, even my father listens about my predictions, my dreams, and spirits. Honestly, oi, adults. But then again, I'm an adult, ironically. And then, Hey, honey, look, the boogeyman walked over me. Seriously, though, I hate the father. Mr. Davis is just so... Oof. Honestly. He assumed that it was all part of a gag set up by Mr. Witherspoon. Nope, I don't think so. But then, after the next day, Corwin and R.E. witnessed the kitchen cabinet and appliance moving on their own, going to town with Jennifer to look for answers. Oh, yeah, now they all believe the house is haunted. 
I mean, come on. Wait, anyone find out? Mm -hmm. Then he found this of a fall historical society in the run by Mr. Witherspoon. I mean, if I tune into curiosity, he produced a pop-up book. Interesting. Pop-up book about how, Bo how Mr. Boogie was ever come to evil. Ironically, that's, that's not an interesting book. I'd rather get that book, actually. Can I get it for Christmas, honey? Shh. <sighs> Didn't break. Mm -mm. The tale of William Hanaver. Hanaver. Could you give me the right script, please? Here you go. Thank you, Raven. Hanover. Thank you, honey. Nice possum, Mom. Thank you. A grouchy old pilgrim man who fell in love with the lovely widow Miriam 300 years ago. Marion did not reciprocate his feelings. The reason why she was rich, beautiful, and she had an adorable little boy with her. So Hanover struck a deal with the devil, selling so for, of course, a magic cloak, which grants him mythical powers. He kidnapped Marion's son, Jonathan, and cast his first suit while actively destroying his own house, while the same spot where the Davis is credited, killing them, and Jonathan and Marion all remain as ghosts. Boogity Johnson, who had a cold when he died. So, apparently ghosts can be sick when they're dead. Wow, that's like, wow. Are trapped inside the house, and Marion's unable to enter and get her child back, which is pretty sad, actually. If anything happened to our children, Jake would probably go in there with a hammer and bonk them on the head. That's how fathers are, though. My dad was like that, too, at one point in our young lives. But when we turn home and tell their parents the situation, but... The father and the mother are not are more interested in their jokes than their children's fears of dealing with an evil ghost. However, as Clark began to assure the children that the house isn't haunted, but they were par but they thought that all the jokes they were, all the things they were doing were, were jokes, but they're not jokes, they're actually real paranormal activity. Peek and played its own and lights flicker, the mummy appeared to come to life dancing while it prompted Lewis to explain that it's time to call a wheelchair. So basically Louise and the children are scared stiff, but the father convinced them to stay in the night and camp out in the living room. Louise, but unfortunately, the kids got all scared and tried, and one of them tried to scare Jennifer, which then they tried to <laughs> like that and all that. So they all went to sleep, and like any family that's scared by something creepy, they decided to, um, I would say, um, stay in the room together in the living room. Anyone would do that if they did with a paranormal. Why would I know that first thing? Okay. Then, um, uh, Louise woke up for the midnight snack and encountered the ghost of Widow Marion, who related her story and was a very sad mother. I mean, <laughs> if my little girls and my big girl were ever hurt, I would club the man who I would club the man the stallion who take them. And I would probably too. Because I know a few magic spells. I even know a most dangerous spell. A spell that can be very dangerous. I've learned a spell from a certain pony. And I can actually do it. I only do it when it's necessary. And I'm not gonna tell you the spell. I rather not. I rather I rather keep into your imagination. As Louise woke up the rest of the family explained and then Murray and that Murray that Widow Marion told her that the whole wanted to get rid of Boogie Widow gave away her magic cloak and David's attempt to do housework, but they were both scared. And at first the boy said, Was she slimy and mean looking? But then the mother said, She was just a nice woman who just wants her little boy. So they all worked together and all household items to fight him. Ari heard a noise and goes off on his own, tore the basement, Cory noticed his absence and followed as for the father, daughter, mother approached the door and in the hallway but discovered the glowing green light at the time nothing more than a green light bulb. Boogie tricked them into the basement. Call and find R.A. struggling covers teddy bear from the thief. Who turned on to be young Jonathan, the ghost who has a cold after all these years. He explained that he borrowed it only because he was lonely. Feeling sorry for him, R.A. let him borrow the teddy bear and Jonathan tells him the story about his previous familiars that Boogie chased away. They were interrupted by a heavy breathing when Mr. Boogie had come in. And the boys were warned to be careful. Mr. Boogie can be very evil. And the two boys promised Jonathan that he'd go back with his mother. That's so sweet. 
Then the rest of them ran in, and there was Mr. Boogie appeared in green and flash, the like evil monster. However, like test gloves. At that point, Disney had some lower projects and all that when they first developed these movies. The anime, the um, costume does look very, oh, I would say childish and easy costumes you can easily find at any toy store or any costume shop. I would say, basically. And Mr. Boogie appeared as you sh and, sh and the, with Boogie shocked anyone who near him with a bowl of electricity from his fingers, called an attempt to attack Mr. Boogie, but he used his magic to turn him to assault uh, against him. Boogie likewise used his magic to dispel Cartman, Jennifer, and Louise. However, Ari, the youngest, grabbed the box and cleaned a snake mister behind Mr. Boogie and shooting the plastic balls at him. But Boogie did not derange to take control of the vacuum, making it chase Ari around the room. But Ari hid behind Boogie in the vacuum to cold Boogie's cloak, sucked it right from his back. Without the cloak, Mr. Boogie seemed powerless and disappeared. The cloak itself popped out of the vacuum cleaner and Corin tossed him to the air and saying, Boogie, Boogie, Boo! Made it disappear in a flat clean line, which is how he hardly had figure out of the boat. Then the widow Marion Johnson appeared, and David Davidson took at the ghost, embraced, and disappeared into the dance of light. Yeah, and yet he still he still has a cold. Weird. And how suddenly so no longer no haunted. But Davis heard Boogie's voice. Wanna bet? Leaving open possibilities to his return. It would make sense. Now this movie was one of the, the Disney's first time to make a TV movie. The movie was basically created in 1986, made for TV family film. It, it was a failed pilot, though, directed by Oz Scotch, written by Michael Miso Joan Janover. Get a Hanover? Janover? Makes sense. Which already aired in the episode of the Disney Sunday movie. Tell the story of Gag Gift. Selma's family moved in the house, you know. And there's also a sequel. But I will reveal that, ladies and gentlemen. As for our cast, Richard Mashu played as the father. Mimi Kennedy played Eloise. Benjamin Georgie, George as Ari, the little brother. David Fun Fausto as Corwin. And Christy Swan and Son as Jennifer. And Howard Witt as William Hanover or Mr. Boogie. John Ashton, of course, as the woman. And Caitlin Kelly Lang as Widow American, and Jamie McAllen as Jonathan, and Kelty Wolf as Satan in the Red Pajamas. Well, my dear germs and worms, it's time for me to hang my bat wings and get to bed. Yeah, sometimes I do like the. I know I'm half bat pony. And yeah, I do kind of like to sleep. Be, uh, uh, well, you know, I have some bad features. But I'd rather hide them from you. <laughs> You're not going to know about that for a long while. So, um, good night, folks, and keep nightmares. <laughs> Water! 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 Okay, my brony watchers, remember to subscribe to my channel, and remember... There's always more with me than meets the eye. Or, should I say, more than meets a white rose. Night, folks. Hee <laughs> hee